But when we think about encouraging people or uh, encouraging someone, we usually think that that means just saying something positive to them. That's perhaps the first thing we think of is saying something like, well done, or don't worry, it'll be okay, or you'll get through this. But as we know, if we think a little more widely, there are lots of different ways we can encourage each other. And I'm just going to share two of those ways with you. Firstly, by looking at the way a couple of people encouraged others. And secondly, by looking at the way God also encourages us in similar ways to those people. If you know your Bible fairly well, or you've been a Christian for a while, and I asked you, could you name somebody in the Bible who was an encourager? you'd probably pretty quickly come up with the name Barnabas. Even his name means son of encouragement. In fact, his real name was Joseph, but it seems that he was such an encourager that he was given that name Barnabas as a nickname. But do you know what Barnabas did to encourage people? These are two things that we're told he did. In Acts chapter four, verse 36 to 37, we read this, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So just when the early church had begun, it was experiencing incredible growth and wonderful fellowship and blessings. And people started to sell their possessions and give the money to the apostles who then use that money to meet the various needs among those new believers. And while that was happening, Barnabas was one of those who really stepped forward and he sold a field that he owned, brought the money, put it at the apostles feet. So his encouragement wasn't just in words, but it was through a generous sacrificial action. It was very practical and it would have encouraged a number of people in different ways. Other people in the fellowship would have been encouraged to follow his example. The apostles would have been encouraged by his act. Those who received support from the money that came from selling that field would have also been encouraged. So one way we can be like Barnabas and encourage others is through generous giving. How else did Barnabas encourage others? Well, later in Acts, we read about Saul or Paul's dramatic encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And Saul was powerfully converted. And instead of opposing the gospel anymore and persecuting the followers of Jesus, he started to preach about Jesus and to persuade other people, other Jews to follow Jesus as well. And that caused astonishment among the Jews in Damascus and some of those Jews conspired to kill him. But he found out about their plot and he was helped by others to escape. And he went to Jerusalem, which is where we find out how Barnabas encouraged and helped him. So in Acts chapter 9, verses 26 to 28, we read, When he came to Jerusalem, that Saul, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. So Barnabas stood by Saul and spoke up for him. Barnabas was a great friend and advocate for Saul. Nobody believed Saul or trusted him, but Barnabas took him to the apostles and bore witness to the good things he'd seen Saul doing. If we're going to be like Barnabas, we need to stick by people and stick up for them, be faithful friends to them and speak up for them. It's so encouraging to hear someone say something good about you in front of someone else, isn't it? But the effects are, were wider ranging than that. Because of Barnabas's encouragement, Saul was able to move freely and preach freely in the name of Jesus. Encouragement can open up many doors of blessing. 
Well, when thinking about the two ways Barnabas brought encouragement, I was reminded about the way Ruth encouraged Naomi. Naomi's husband had died, and then both of her sons also died. She was understandably bitter as she headed back to Judah with her daughter-in-laws, Orpah and Ruth. On the journey, Naomi urged them both to head back home and leave her to continue the journey alone. So let me read from Ruth chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. Return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it's more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So Ruth encouraged Naomi by refusing to leave her in her grief, her bitterness and her struggles. She stuck by her to support and help her, just like Barnabas who'd refused to abandon Saul. And as the events unfold in the book of Ruth, Ruth meets and marries Boaz, it's a connection which means that Ruth was able to provide food and practical support for Naomi and also embrace her into a new family. What an encouragement that practical and emotional support would have been to Naomi when well-meaning words of comfort probably would have had very little effect on her. So like Barnabas, Ruth encouraged by not giving up on someone and also by providing help in appropriate ways. And aren't those two of the ways that God also greatly encourages us? Isn't that what we're reminded of and encouraged by in the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus is the good shepherd who sticks by us and leads us through all of life's ups and downs. He doesn't abandon us in the sad times or the dangerous times. He sets a table of fellowship with us when the turmoil of life rages all around us so that we'll always be in his loving presence or in his house forever. And he provides us with what we need for our good and for his glory. Because of him, I shall not be in want. My cup overflows. Goodness and mercy will always follow me. We know his abiding presence through the Holy Spirit, who Jesus said in John 14, 16 to 17, will be another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. He will be in you as well as with you, said Jesus. In Acts 9.31, we read, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. You and I can be encouraged by the Holy Spirit, and we can also be led, inspired, and empowered by the Holy Spirit to encourage others as well. Will you let that happen in your life today? and every day this week, throughout this month, and beyond that into the rest of your life? Will you let God encourage you through his faithful presence and generous provision? 
And will you encourage others just as the Good Shepherd and the Holy Spirit have encouraged you? How can you be and continue being a Barnabas or even a Ruth, encouraging others through your faithful commitment to them and your generous giving to meet their needs?